Hi guys, it's been a while since I've made a video for you. Um, today we're just going to make this rook piece. Um, just because I think it's we've done similar things before and I just want to get back into making videos. So I just thought this would be kind of cool. And there's a couple of little things that I've involved in this one that we didn't have in the other video as well. Um, so this is what the result will be, something like that. So you need to get a reference image in order to uh, work from. And I already have one available. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an image as a reference. And locate your image. Drop that in and it's huge. So I'm going to scale this down a lot. So you can press S to scale it down. Uh, and then G to move it up and then hold uh, tap Z and it will lock it onto the Z axis and bring it up just above this base uh, X axis here. OK, and from here, what we're going to do is we're going to be much like the uh, chess pawn piece. We're going to be extruding it up, scaling it in and out, and then that will help to give it all the, the shape. And at the top, we're going to use the checker select to create the kind of castle kind of style effect to make it look like it's actually a rook. So we're going to press Shift A. And I'm going to go in and we're going to start with a circle, which is super easy to work with. Uh, as you can see, this will pop up in the bottom left. We're going to pick, let's go with 16. Actually, we'll go with, yeah, we'll go with 16 for now. OK, and then once you click off that, that's left as that's you can't change that now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it in with S. So from here I'm going to tap one, and I'm going to scale my circle in some more, and a little bit more. And then from here I'm going to press Tab to enter edit mode, and you can see it selects all those vertices there. I'm going to press E to extrude, bring it up, press Z to lock it to the Z axis. Click it just there. You can have a little look with the middle mouse wheel to see what it's looking like, orbit around it a little bit. Go back to this side, press 1 again. Do So what I'm using there, just there, to change into like see-through wireframe, uh, you've got Shift-Z. You can also use this as X-ray, should I say, um, to see straight kind of through everything and turn it into wireframe at the same time. Really useful when you're working like this. Uh, and it helps you select everything as well and if it's off you'll only select what's on the front okay and then we will extrude with e again raise it up just a touch scale it in extrude it up again i'm going to right click here g to bring it up z to lock it in s to scale and i'm going to do the same again e to extrude left click there s to bring it in e to extrude Z to lock it into the axis, S to scale it in again, and zoom in a little bit, hold shift and middle mouse button to pan up a little bit so I can be nice and close. E to extrude, Z to lock, S to scale in, and you'll keep going through with this to get as much of the shape as you like. Scale it in again, E to extrude up, Z to lock pretty straightforward the extruding part of it so at this point I just want to kind of leave it roughly where it is and have it be a, a flat kind of piece rather than angled or anything like that so I'm just gonna scale it out from where it is and do the same thing again up here and I'm gonna try and keep that kind of narrow into there I'm not gonna make it exactly as they've made it just to give it a little bit of my own kind of flavor on there. OK, and then we should have a good start to this. Now I can hide it, hide the reference just by clicking this little button in the out in the uh, collection just over here. OK, and from here, you can see we've got a relatively reasonable shape, quite nice and low poly looking. It's pretty cool. And you can right click on it and shade smooth. And from here, what would be quite a good idea actually is come down into this. You've got your this green object data properties. 
auto smooth it and I just write about 60 in there and it makes it look pretty smooth. Maybe you can adjust that down a little bit depending on what kind of look you want. Go with like, let's go with 30. Looks alright like 30. Smooth it out enough. Tab back into that and now we've got to make the top section just here. Um, as it is on our reference. Do, do, do. Let me just hide this circle we're making just to get a clearer view. There is a big chunk out of the top here and without that it's not going to really look recognisable. Uh, so, hide that reference again. From here, press E and then press S and then scale it in like that. It's looking cool. And then from here I'm going to press E and then Z. So extrude it and then down, just down to about level with the outside, this edge here. I like it just there. Uh, alt click on that inside edge with your edge select, or you can do the same thing with your vertex select using one, two, or three, or these up here. And then I'm going to just press F just to fill that in for now. Looks like there's some kind of uh, artifacting going on here with the, the shading. Let me just see if I can change that myself. Or maybe it just needs to be a little bit higher and off top. So yeah, that was just pushing against the other faces and so it wasn't rendering properly. Just double check that as well. Oh, these are the wrong way around. So this isn't super important for this tutorial because we're not looking at this level of detail. But the blue faces here shown under the face orientation, these are the ones that the, uh, as what I've been learning recently, actually, these are showing the blue side is what the shader is actually trying to render. And the red is what it's not meant to be rendering. So if I'm going to press A and select all the faces, and I'm going to press Alt N, and then I'm going to do recalculate outside. Now all the shading is going to be correctly so showed on this side. So on the inside, you've got the red because that's not meant to be showing shown to the camera. And on the outside, you've got blue, which means it's actually going to be rendered and shown. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all these faces by alt left clicking on one of these faces with face select on. And I am going to move this down a little. I'm going to go G, Z, bring it down a bit. Because what I'm going to do now is raise every other face to give it that, that look that we want. So I'm going to come up here and go select, checker deselect, which gives us half of them in a checker, which is a feature that I only just really heard about, so I really like this. And E to extrude, Z to lock it up to that axis, and bring it up as much as you still like. You could have it like this if you want. It looks kind of ridiculous, so I'm not going to bother, but we're going to leave it like that. Okay, and I should probably turn off this face orientation now because it's not really useful to us anymore. And there is our shape for our rook. Uh, I, I think it's quite a cool little piece. I don't know if I'm going to make all of the chess pieces, but I just thought this one would be a good introduction back into me working again on this kind of stuff for the year. So in total, it looks like this is 305 faces, which isn't too bad considering the amount of detail that we have got on it. And you can have more detail if you want. Uh, I don't think I will want that for this one because I want it to be low poly. And that's kind of the theme that we're going with for now. So I'm going to add a, on Shift A, I'm going to add this plane, scale it up and type 10, hit enter, and it will be set for you. Just a couple of little tweaks just to make it look a bit better for now. I'm going to click on the plane, go over to here, press new. And I'm going to change the color darker. Just make it a dark kind of gray. And I'm going to lower the roughness. And then on the actual rook piece, we're going to go, should we go white? No, we'll, go, we'll make it black like the other one. There we go. So just bring that color all the way down. Turn the roughness down and it makes it look more like a shiny piece. It could be like a painted piece or something. So from here, that is finished for me. Um, I'm going to try and post a another video as soon as I can. Just trying to learn and balance what I'm learning with actually posting. So that I come back with something to actually show that's different. But anyway, 
Let me know if there's anything you want me to make in the future down below in the comments. Um, feel free to subscribe or like this video. <laughs> sounds so cheesy saying that out loud. But yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.